Hey you! Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Recently a friend of mine who is also a fountain pen aficionado, which is a fancy word for fountain pen geek, suggested a topic for my YouTube channel. He suggested I go to pawn shops and find old fountain pens and then show how to bring them back to life. Now I'm no pen restorer, but it would be cool to see what might happen if I found something interesting and worked on it. Certainly it would be entertaining whether I was successful at restoring the pen or not. It would probably be even more entertaining watching me fail, I'm sure. I've never seen anything like it. Julie, you failed. I suggest you see a specialist. What kind of specialist? He's broken all your tools. The fire brigade once got my head out of some railings. Did you want them to? No. I used to leave it there when I wasn't using it for school. So with my antiquing loving wife in tow, we set out to browse the various pawn shops in town. The first thing we discovered was that pawn shops don't carry fountain pens, so we started looking at antique stores and dealers. There's one large antique dealer in town that is like a broker for many antique suppliers. Each supplier has its own nook in the large shop. I asked about fountain pens and was led to one particular nook where I immediately spied a fountain pen in a glass case with a lot of other bric-a-brac. It was a lever filler, looked antique, and was on 12 bucks. Sold. The next glass case had a marble desk set with two desk pens and a wind-up clock. The desk pens were a ballpoint and an aerometric fountain pen, and the set was 50 bucks. Sold again. After buying Win a couple of items, we came home so I could examine my prizes. The desk set is gorgeous and adorns my desk right now. But the real prize was this Canadian-made 1930s Eclipse Zephyr lever filler. Join me as I unbox my antique shop goodies and see if I was successful in restoring this beautiful celluloid antique fountain pen right now. <laughs> And there's a large antique dealer in Calgary called Ellie Grace. They're sort of like a consignment shop for antique dealers. So they have a number of different booths or areas of the store uh, for different uh, people that collect antiques and sell them. Uh, so I asked and they said, oh, George has something. So I went into George's little spot and I found a couple of things. The first thing I found was this. And I was intrigued because that looks like celluloid to me. And it's a uh, lever filler uh, and had an interesting semi-hooded kind of a style to it. And it looks very uh, pre-war, mid-30s to early 40s kind of uh, style to it. I had no idea what it was, so I bought it. It was only 12 but $12. I mean, that's... That's a steal, even if it never works. And there's no branding on it whatsoever. So I'm um, be interested to see if I can get this pen working. And I also found this dust set at the same shop. It's solid marble. It's made in West Germany. Has a working, as you can hear, clock with an alarm and everything. And it has a ballpoint, and you expected another ballpoint. But yes, it's a fountain pen. What a nice little piece to put center stage on my channel. As you can see, I paid $50 for it. That's Canadian. Not bad. So now I'm going to walk you through the steps I took to get this Eclipse Zephyr to work again. The first thing I did was to take a bunch of photos of the pen and put them up on the various Facebook fountain pen groups I belong to, trying to get an answer as to just what this pen was. Almost immediately I was given the answer that this was a mid-1930s celluloid fountain pen made in Canada by a company called Eclipse and the model is a Zephyr. I tried to get the section off but it was clear the section was glued shut and there didn't seem to be an ink sack in the pen. I did a bunch of research on the best ways to remove a shellac section on a celluloid fountain pen. My main resources were the Fountain Pen Network Forum and Chris Rapsaic's excellent YouTube videos on restoring vintage pens. Another great video resource is Steph at Grand Mia Pens on YouTube. I'll put links to both Chris and Steph's YouTube channels in the description. The consensus of opinion was that dry heat is what will get the shellac section off. 
but it was going to be tricky because you need to heat the pen enough to melt the shellac, but not hot enough to melt the celluloid. And there's only an 8 degree Fahrenheit margin of error as shellac melts at 167 degrees Fahrenheit and celluloid at 175 degrees. So the trick is to get the shellac hot but keep the celluloid cool. The good thing is that the section is made of a plastic that should withstand a lot more heat than either the shellac or the celluloid. So if I can keep the celluloid covered and just heat the section, it should work. The best tip I found was to keep your hand in the heat flow from the heat gun. And if your hand starts to burn, then this celluloid is going to melt. So I directed the hot air from the gun, which was about 10 inches away from the section, and my hand was covering the celluloid body. And I took my time, and I tried it over and over again for three days. Between attempts, I soaked the pen in pen flush, which is 10% ammonia and 10% distilled water, and I dried it completely before heating. I'd heat it until my hand got hot and then put this elastic band around the section and twist it back and forth. On day three, it budged. Here's the video of the start of that process on day one. And I'm just going to try to heat just this section right up here because that's where all the shellac is that's holding this thing together. My heat gun has two settings. I'm going to keep my hand close to the area where I want to heat up so that if my hand gets hot then it's too hot for the uh, celluloid and for the pen. Now I'm about uh, six inches away and it's getting warm. And I'm going to try to just ease that a little bit. I'm going to keep repeating this process until it gives. And here is the result. I took these photos showing the shellac that was around the nipple of the section and inside the barrel. I carefully scraped that excess shellac off and cleaned the pen inside and out. So here is where we are with the restoration of the Eclipse Zephyr. I uh, did all that heating and everything as you saw in the previous video. And I was successful after day three. The section came off and I scraped off the excess shellac that was on that nipple of the section as well. But I had to get the nib out. So I noticed that the ebonite feed is in, in there. It's probably stuck in there with a lot of uh, old ink. And so I soaked it quite a bit. It had already been soaked three days, but I soaked it some more. And then I decided I needed to knock it out. So I took the end of a paintbrush and I pushed very firmly, holding on to the section with a gripper, like this elastic, and pushed with the base of the paintbrush and pushed as hard as I could. And it came loose. And there is the ebonite feed. And I cleaned that up. It was full of old ink and scraped off the old ink and everything and soaked that in pen flush. Soaked the section in pen flush so it was clean as could be. And the nib itself, this is what it looks like. And it says very smooth, made in USA, medium. And it's obviously a gold plated steel of some sort but a lot of corrosion. It might still write, but it does look like one of those fold over. If you can look against my thumbnail here, you can see that is one of those nibs that they took. It's usually brass. I've seen this in an old German pen. They took the tines and folded them back. And that was your tipping material. It's not really iridium pointed, but it's folded over. You see that right there? So it might be interesting, but I thought, well, that's a fairly standard size number five. And here is a number five Chinese generic nib, and it fits on the feed very nicely, just like that. I held them both together. We take the section and we push the whole thing together. And I think we have something that's going to be writable. It's a little bit 
crooked because I think this plastic has been deformed. Now, I didn't deform it. The celluloid as well, when I bought the pen, just seems a little bit twisted, both in the cap and the barrel. So I think it's been subjected to heat. You look down that barrel, you can see that the, how the pressure bar works. It presses down on that bar. It's a little bit off-center, so I might try to straighten it up in there before we put a sack in it but the next thing to do was to find a sack so i went to my pen guru jack hernandez and he offered me a couple of uh, sacks one in silicone rubber and one in latex rubber and they look to be the right size to go on top of that section and he loaned me this cool little tool if you've watched Chris Rapsaic's videos on how to restore vintage fountain pens with ink sacks, he has this cool little spreader bar that you slip the sack on like that and you squeeze it and just stretch that sack. So I've got the pen in pieces and I've got all my tools here. I've got brushes and sack spreaders and rubbers, oh my, and elastics and shellac and scissors oh my and the first part is going to be uh, cutting this sack to length and i've decided to use the black latex sack rather than the silicone one i'll put the sack almost to the end i think it probably goes to all the way to the end yeah it's going pretty much to the end there and then i'll put the section up next to it to see where I need to cut it. And I think that I need to cut it right about there. So I'm gonna try to cut it absolutely straight with my very sharp scissors. Nice straight cut. And then we need to put that sack on the section using the sack spreader. Practiced a little bit with this. Doing this over camera is going to be very difficult. Put the section underneath that bit right there and flip it over and then pull the the tool out that's what she said some people say to use uh, shellac on that section uh, but chris says to use straight up elmer's glue which is what i'm going to do only my glue isn't elmer's it's lepage i'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue on my finger pretty sure you don't need a lot not as easy as it looks I think I got it on there all right. I'm just going to straighten it up, give it a little bit of a twist. Double check to make sure we're okay. And that seems to be working. So now, as per Chris's instruction, I'm going to leave that overnight and then we'll come back to it. And I'm going to paint a little bit of shellac around the outside of that just to seal it from ink leakage. See you in 24. And welcome back 24 hours later. And the sack is nicely glued and dried. And I had the opportunity to polish up the section as well uh, with a little bit of uh, Meguiar's number nine swirl remover. Works really nice on plastic. And we're gonna put the nib back in the section with the feed. Uh, here is the original nib. It looks pretty yucky. I want the pen to write. I'm sure it will write with this nib, but so I've got a generic Chinese nib. Number five fits on that ebonite feed just perfectly. And we're going to put it into the section. There we go. Friction fit. And now we're ready to shellac that seam right there to make sure there's no leaks, but we have to put some talc on that sack so it doesn't get all bunged up inside that barrel. I got a little bag of talc here. It's going to dredge it. A little bit of that talc. There we go. So that should go on very easily. Now I'll open up my little bit of borrowed shellac. I got this shellac from Jack. Old blackjack shellac. Dip my paintbrush. 
this is a lifetime supply of shellac right here and I'm just going to paint the surface so it's in that seam all the way around mostly for that seam right there so no ink can get through and I think I'm just gonna let that dry and then put a little bit more shellac just on that part of the section so that it anchors it to the barrel when I put it in but I'm gonna let that dry first so I've let that shellac dry and I've put just a touch more just there on the section to anchor it to the barrel and I'm going to put it I know Chris likes to put the lever on the top I like to write with the pen not seeing it so I'm going to put it underneath slide it on there so it lines up and let that sit to dry and we'll come back and ink it up and see if it works and now let's ink this pen I'm going to use Waterman Mysterious Blue as Waterman is one of the safest inks to use on vintage pens at least that's what I'm reliably told uh, so let's give it a try the lever works fairly nicely you can feel it engaging that sack and I'm going to dip the pen down into the ink up to this part of the feed at least over the section and I'm going to do it one more time should hear bubbles and let's give this a try this is the Eclipse Zephyr and it has a fine steel number five nib on it Well, it works very nicely. Ink is Waterman Mysterious Blue. Not bad at all. So now that the pen is together and inked, let's look at the parts and features of this mid-1930s Eclipse Zephyr. The pen was probably made between 1935 and 1940. Overall, the pen is a relatively small cigar shaped pen with a flat top finial and a pointed end finial and is made out of a wonderful translucent celluloid that looks like a tiger stripe also what's really odd about this pen when you first hold it uh, is that it's wonky and i think that's because either just age or it's been subjected to some heat it's been put somewhere where it's been hot and it's kind of warped you can sort of tell that when you roll it around on a surface it it kind of rolls like a weeble and everything kind of does doesn't line up right and the lines kind of look a little wonky but that just gives it some character I think so from the top there is a, a slight point on that black plastic uh, finial that holds the it actually screws down and holds that clip in place and you can see there's some chipping uh, in there over the years people have tried to take that off and then there's this small arrow clip which actually is fairly usable the cap tapers up and then is straight to about here where there is a, a wide gold colored band that goes all the way around again no branding and then there's a small step down to the barrel which is straight to about here where it begins to taper away and of course there's that lever and the lever over the years has gotten very very loose I don't want to kind of lift it because it's full of ink but it kind of rattles around not so much when it's full of ink and then that lovely celluloid ends at this bullet point at the end the cap unscrews with one two turns to reveal a black plastic section which is kind of bullet shaped and has this little groove in it as well and you can see how wonky this is just by looking at how that nib lines up with the section and the barrel 
it looks worse on the back let's take a look here it says patented registered USA GR Britain and Canada and again no branding and there's the back and you can see how again the section and the feed and the nib all sort of are skewed to each other so that's melting and that feed is ebonite and that nib is a Chinese replacement the pen feels interesting in the hand let's say that uh, it's kind of straight through here and your fingers are on the threads and so if you're right down here by the section your underside of your finger is on that little bevel on the back but if you're right back here you're only on the barrel so I found sort of a compromise for writing with a part on the section and part on the barrel the cap posts not very deeply and I wouldn't push it because that's very brittle old celluloid but it doesn't back weight the pen because it's very very light indeed so this is fairly comfortable to write with posted like this and again I paid $12 for this pen at an antique store now let's look at some size comparisons and here we are with the 1930s Eclipse Zephyr with a 1940s Waterman's Taperite a 1960s Schaefer student pen a Pilot E95S and a Pilot Metropolitan for scale now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you can see that the Eclipse is just about as long as the Metropolitan when it's posted now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted of course the Pilot E95S is not designed to be written with unposted now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample and here we are with the Eclipse Zephyr this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Eclipse Zephyr and it's from circa 1935 let's say and it has a fine Chinese steel nib in it right now and the ink is Waterman's mysterious blue and let's check the wetness that's very wet very nice and of course very stiff being Chinese steel but very smooth and of course this nib makes a line that's roughly 0 0.4 millimeters in thickness which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine and it's a very interesting writing experience it's not a pen that I'll probably write with a lot it's interesting it's fascinating to look at the celluloid is great and the fact that I paid twelve dollars for it uh, just adds to the bonus of this pen uh, but the real thing was the experience of being able to restore it back to working condition and I thank Jack Hernandez for his help with the tools and materials and I thank Chris Rapsaic and Steph from Grand Mia Pens for their wonderful informative videos on how to do this uh, this was my first attempt at anything like this uh, and I think it was very successful I might try and do it again we'll see and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please look in the description for a link to gold spot pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at Goldspot using my link 
you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your questions in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.